Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I'm continuing my perennial and shrub move around my dominoes plan here in the backyard. Um, in my last video I was talking about how putting in some hydrangeas here and there caused me to move other plants, which caused me to move other plants, which caused me to move other plants. Well, that process is still ongoing right now. Today's project is to get my um, two new Summer Crush hydrangeas into the ground. You may remember I bought two of them at Lowe's very recently, a couple weeks ago at this time. And I want to put them down here in this flower bed next to the one that I already have. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to move some things out of here to somewhere else. So let's do this another round of playing dominoes with plants. In this bed, underneath this Cherokee Princess dogwood, that's a Cornus Florida Cherokee Princess, I have currently a yellow star cactus uh, type of dahlia, yellow star is its name, um, and it's a tuber, and it's grown about four feet tall. It is still putting on buds. It looks terrible because the squirrels keep jumping onto it. Actually, I think the squirrels were using it as a ladder to get to the tomatoes that are here on this trellis. Ooh, look, we've got some ripening ones, by the way. Um, so this dahlia kept getting jumped on by squirrels, so a lot of its side shoots have been broken off. But it's still still viable, and it still does have one new bud on it right now. But I think I'm going to take it out of there. I have one Summer Crush hydrangea that I put in here last year in 2021, and so I have two more, and I think I'm going to put one of them over there, roughly near where the dahlia currently is, and then so I'll have one back there, one here, and I think I'm going to put one here. But that means I need to move this. This is a lobelia that I recently planted. So I need to move the lobelia out of there to make room for the summer crush. Or actually, looking at it, maybe I'll put a summer crush, or keep the one that I have here. And then let's come around this way and look. And then I could put, so there's that one there. I could put one here where the shovel is, and then one kind of back there and kind of ring it that way. Hmm. From this perspective, that might be a really nice plan. Or I could kind of put one where the shovel is and then one kind of where that sedum flower head is laying down right now. Take out this Monarda, which hasn't really done well here anyway. It only grew three stalks this year and it's covered in powdery mildew and it only had one flower on it. So that, maybe that's it. Maybe I'll put one here and one here and take out the Monarda. Hmm. Well, in either case, I need to get that dahlia out of there. I'm going to be putting the dahlia into a, um, one of my terraced beds. This lower terraced bed has been used as a nursery bed so far. I'm, I'm putting things in here to hold until I know where I want them permanently. This is another yellow star dahlia. So I think what I'm going to do, I love how this American Dawn Dahlia is thriving in this location. So I have some out front that I'm probably going to pull back. And I'm going to be putting them here. I'm going to be moving these plants, more dominoes put uh, tall dahlias here and so I think I'm going to put some tall dahlias on this side as well as a tall back um, for this bed as you look at it from this side. I think it'll be nice and then that would create kind of a dahlia walk right there with tall dahlias um, along that grassy path. So I think I'm going to be putting this dahlia right here and then I'm going to be moving this one over to there eventually. And then there are some out front that I'll be putting in here as well. I've had all kinds of things in this area bef uh, before now. I've had gladiolus in here. I've had uh, spring bulbs in here. Uh, I used to have some daisies in here. And, uh, and that's all within like 15 months because I just created this bed last summer. So here's the tuber collection that um, was underground. And actually this part of it had worked itself out of the ground. Here's the main stalk that uh, had to be broken off because of the um, squirrels. And I'm totally breaking up this part right now. I'll trim that better later. All right, so I'm gonna plant this so that this uh, area where the tubers join the stalk is right at ground level. So something like that. 
Don't want to bury them too deep because then they might rot in the soil, but also you want to bury them deep enough that they don't dry out. I'm not using any biotone because this soil has recently been amended with compost and I don't think it needs any more nutrients than that. There we go. All right. So that's gonna be just fine right there all winter. We live in zone seven and dahlias are hardy here in zone seven. So I've had many, many, many dahlias come back after staying in the ground over the winter. So I'm not worried about this at all. And this is pretty well draining soil because it's on a hill and uh, any water, um, it doesn't collect here. It just kind of floats down the hill. So I think this is gonna be good. And then when I put a couple more across in here, I think that'll be a nice little, uh, I'll have to support them really well next year. That was one of the lessons I learned this year with my yellow star dahlias. I needed much more support. But now that I know that, I'll be able to give them what they need next season. And then I'll have this kind of green wall of goodness here, creating a beautiful dahlia pathway here. At least that's kind of what I have in my head. Down in here, I have some real charmer daisies, which look like they've given up the ghost here. Those are not gonna come back for me next year. So now I have room for something else here on the front. And then this is that Monarda that really didn't do anything this year. There's more daisies there. Yeah. So I think I'm just gonna pull this out. Look how easy that was. And this is wild violet, so they can stay or they can leave either way. But so I think these are markers from old uh, gladiolus that aren't here anymore. So, yeah, I think I'm going to put um, one of the um, summer crushes right here or so. Maybe right there. And then the other one, something like, oh, I don't want it too close to the sedum. So something like... Mm -hmm. What if I put it like right here? This one could go here. What do you think of that plan? Does that work? You probably can't even see what I'm doing here. The lighting and the angles are terrible. Okay, maybe this is a little bit easier to see. Uh, so there's one right here and the center of this plant is right in the center of the foliage. And so I'm thinking of putting one kind of centered right there and one kind of right there. Now these grow, they say to be um, eight, uh, one and a half to three feet tall and wide. Um, this one has been in the ground for one year and these are brand new. And that one I would say is about two and a half feet tall and wide. It might grow a little bit bigger next year, but not too much. And so I think if I, I want them in kind of a curve, kind of like a swoopy kind of thing. So. And I want room in front of them to plant things along here. So I don't want them too close to the front of the bed either. So I'm thinking about that. Let's go around and look and see what this looks like from the other side. From out here, you'll mainly see this one that I planted last year. And then the ones that I, I'm considering putting in will be more of a ring of hydrangeas to be enjoyed from after you come through the arbor like right there. It'd be a nice little greeting of that beautiful bright pink color. And I think it's okay because in here I've got salvias, I've got some uh, coneflowers, hyssop, calamintha, lobelia, and tall phlox. So there's plenty of perennial interest in this area. I don't think I need to pull these short hydrangeas across the front here. There's a pot that's got an azalea in it I need to find a home for. Um, so I think I think, I think that's going to be a good location for these. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in the ground. So I have this hosta 
which has been totally infiltrated by wild violets. And I've been letting them intermingle and grow together. But I think it's probably past time now that I dig it up and separate out the roots and get the violets out of the hosta clump and then replant uh, separately. So I think maybe that'll be a fun project for today. And I can just sit here and fiddle with it and we'll see how hard or easy it's gonna turn out to be. Now I might need to go get some other tools like my hori hori or, uh, well, there's part of the hosta right there. Uh, I might want to soak it in water to get the dirt off. So there's some hosta. Get a trash bucket going here. I'm gonna try to break apart these two hosta clumps so I can get the violets out from between them. This would be easier if I had my hori hori. Now I don't really know if I got all of the violet root ball off of there. It looks like that is, I think that's a hosta shoot. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say I got all the violets off of that. I might not have, but I don't see anything. So over here, see this is violets right there. So I know there's still some violets connected to this. I'm gonna get them off if I can. I might have to just live with fewer bits of the hosta than I was hoping to get. Okay, I'm going to hope that what I have left here are all roots for the hosta with no violets left in there. If there are violets left in there, they certainly will regrow. They're very tenacious. And so I ended up with one, two, three, four shoots of pasta. I'm just gonna replant it as if it's one. Although I could separate them and maybe get four hostas out of it. Should I do that? Maybe I should. Maybe I'll do that. I could put four hostas right across here. The problem with this spot was I think it was a little bit too hot for the hosta, so I think this actually is not a great spot to put four in a row here. So I'm gonna find another area that I want four hostas that have gold centers and green edges. Well, much to my surprise, I don't have any more dominoes left to fall. Uh, putting in those hydrangeas really didn't affect anything, but I chose to pull out that hosta, get the violets out of it, and put those hosta uh, pieces right down in here. So now I can go down to my stash and get something and see if I can find a new place for it. Okay, so I have this Carnival Rose Granita Heucra that I got on clearance at Lowe's the other day for $7. It's a nice big size clump. Um, and it does have at least two different growth points inside here. I might divide it. I might not. I'm gonna, when I get it out of the pot, I'll look at it closer and see if I wanna divide it or not. I could just split it in half right there, couldn't I? I might do that. Um, and I'm gonna put it under here. Actually, I'm not putting it in this space. I think I'm gonna put it right here under this azalea because I have three other 
uh, heuchras up in the other part of the garden that I think I'm going to put over here. So um, let's look and see how big this gets when it's mature. Ten to twelve inches high and twelve to fourteen inches. So it's actually almost mature at the size that it is in this pot. So let's see what it would look like over here. If I split it in two, is there room for two right there? I think so. Put one there and the other there. I think there's room for two there, don't you think? All right, so I want to kind of take a peek at this root ball, see if it is mature enough to be split without too much damage to the root ball. All right, I haven't broken any of the roots. All I've done is shake soil off of it. And I can see that I think the answer is yes. There are, let me get my unwieldy gloves off here. I think there are two distinct growing points. And if I can detangle these leaves from each other, I think it'll be easier to see. It's like kind of, Trying to put a part in some unruly hair is what we got going on here. Okay, there we go. So I found a space where I can separate two different uh, growing clumps here. Right there. So I'm going to put my shovel right there and cut this in half could also use a hori hori or a kitchen knife or a steak knife or a bread knife. I'm gonna go ahead and put this little rhizome down in there in case it wants to go ahead and root. I'll give it a chance to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and take this soil that the plant was in and add it to my planting bed just as, you know, extra good amendments. Why not? Don't need it to go to waste. In this planting container, I have three very smoothie uh, hubris. And I'm gonna take them out of here, not because they're failing or anything, but because they just, you can't see them unless you're standing right here. So I'm gonna take them out, I'm gonna put them down at the lower patio. See, they're beautiful. They're just too short to show up here. Let's go put these down by the lower patio. That'll be a better spot for them, I think. These are very smoothy heucheras. I, uh, I really like them. They, um, they have a really pretty berry color on the new leaves, and then they age to more of a greenish, tannish beige color um, with some red still in it. So I think they're very pretty, multi-dimensional in their color. I think that'll be a really nice addition to this area. This one very clearly has three growth points. I'm hoping that in this location, being in the ground instead of in a container, that it will actually grow bigger and fuller over time. 
But if I wanted to, I could split this into three pretty easily right now. I think I'm not going to though. I'm just gonna let it grow big next year. This is the biggest of all of them. This one has one, two, three, seven growth points. I definitely could divide this one, but I'm not going to. I like it the size that it is. I want that this way more. All right, so now I have two Hugros over there and three over here. Although this one on the left, I feel like it needs to come down more toward the front. What do you think? Yeah, this one has to come closer to the front of the, of the rocks. Let me move that one real quick. Okay, yeah, that's a much better position for that one on the left. Um, they're now more even against the edge of the patio. And I think once they fill in, I think they're gonna grow just a little bit wider and fuller next season. And when that happens, I think it'll be really nice to have those pretty pink eucharas down here at the edge of the patio. Three there of one, of one type and then two over here of a different type. So I'm really happy with the placement of those. And if this lower petalum will fill out, then it'll look real nice with those. But if it doesn't fill out, it'll go out front maybe, because I think one of you told me that it needs more sun. So probably the lower petalum will come out next year and then be replaced with something else that has some sort of red color, but something that can handle the part sun location that we have here. Well, I got caught up with other things around the yard, uh, different chores, I had to water my grass, I had to um, do dinner and dishes and all of that, and I realized now it's almost evening and we're losing light. And I didn't finish up this video. So real quick, let's just recap what we've done in this video today. Lulu, do you want to show us the plants that we put in? She says, no, I am not a gardener. Hannah, do you want to show us the new plants that you see in here? What do you think, Hannah? Oh, she's looking for squirrels. All right, well, anyway, so here are the, um, this is the existing Summer Crush Hydrangea that we had here. Uh, this is about a year and a half old now. I think I planted it in probably May or June of 2021. And then here are the two that I planted today. And they are gonna form a nice curve. Our neighbors are enjoying dinner on their deck back there. And they're gonna be in a nice curve around this way. And from this side, I think we will be able to see them, but they're not really gonna be the feature of this side of the garden. Um, they're just gonna be really nice addition back there, but they will be the feature of when we come through the Rose Arbor, then we'll see them here on the left side. What is it, Hannah? What is it? So uh, I still have some room here to plant things in front. I used to have real charmer daisies right here, but they've kind of fiddled, fizzled out a little bit. So uh, in their place, I'll be putting something different here next spring. Um, and we'll have the summer crush hydrangeas right here. And I think it'll look really pretty, especially next to the autumn joy sedum. Now I also took out a hosta that had been infiltrated with uh, violets there and we moved it to this location over here. Hannah, you wanna show us the hostas? Yeah, there they are. She says, no, nope, they're squirrels I'm worried about. Anyway, I divided the hosta up into four individual clumps and so I went ahead and I could have planted them as one clump and, and had one nice big full hosta next year. But instead, I'm choosing to have four small hostas next year. And over time, they'll grow and there'll be nice big clumps here. I don't know what variety of hosta this is, but it does have a yellow center and then a green edge. And I've put them in a curve, which is going to mimic the pathway that we're going to have here. And I've been saying, I don't know exactly what uh, materials this path is going to be made of, but um, it'll, sorry for all the noises. It'll either be mulch, a different color of mulch, or it'll be stones, or it'll be maybe lined with stones like I've started here. Maybe I'll plant some grass. One of you suggested that I should plant grass. It would be a nice completion over here. That could be true. 
uh, or maybe just a, a stone every now and again it has stepping stones through here. I don't know exactly yet, but these hostas are now in the curve of the new um, path that will come through here. Okay, so then I decided to go ahead and get some stuff out of my stash and I planted this heuchera here. I divided it into two pieces and it's looking really good. Hannah likes it, don't you, Hannah? Yes, you do. Uh, this is the Carnival Rose Granita. Um, and I divided it into two so it'll be bigger next year. It's a little bit draggled at the moment. And then on the other side of this lower petalum, I planted three wild berry heucheras, and those are gonna be nice as well. Um, I'm really pleased with how this is coming together. This is gonna be green and red, or green and pink kinds of flowers down in here. So I have here, these are the, uh, what did I say they were, Francie? Yeah, I think these are Francie hostas here three. This is Golden Globe Arbor Arborvitae, but it doesn't really get enough sun to turn gold. It's mostly this bright green color. And then, oh, sorry about the noise. And then back in here, I have three anemones and then these three heucheras. So the pink and the pink and then the Laura Petalum, which probably will move, but for now is still here. That's pink. And then more pink with this uh, heuchera over here. I think that that is going to be a really nice color combination to have in this garden and Hannah agrees. And can I just say that with this pink here and this pink here, the red of the Laura Petalum and this pink, and then the echoes of the pink back here with the Twist and Shout Hydrangea, I think that's just really beautiful vista right here. I'm really pleased with how this garden is coming along. Please ignore these two pots here <laughs> that are filled with plants that I'm just gonna put to the compost bin. Thank you so much, friends, for joining me today as I moved around plants, planted some things, moved some things, took some things out, and just generally made a little bit more progress here on the lower patio garden area and the rose arbor garden. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw, and if you have any suggestions for me, comments, questions, please put them in the comment section down below. I love hearing from you guys. And I hope that you'll join me on another video real soon, friends. Take care, have a wonderful day in your gardens, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.